Welcome back. Monterey County is open for business. You're going to learn about some great uh, businesses in our next segment, in the next two segments. But, you know, this next one is one of my absolute favorites. And uh, I always owe my hair to her and to her salon. So, Diana Taylor, Adara's Salon. Welcome. Thank you, Marianne. So, now, of course, if it doesn't look good, everybody's going to think. Yeah. Uh, Diana Taylor. <laughs> I oh, promise yeah, I'll take days better care days. of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I want to thank you for giving me a chance to talk about my business and talk about small business on the Monterey Peninsula. Good. Well, we've just uh, we've just completed Small Business Month, so it's very appropriate. But here in Monterey County, every day is Small Business Day. Eighty-two percent of the businesses in Monterey County are small business, so it's pretty significant for our area. Yeah. So. You have how many uh, people working for you? I have three people working for me. Which, yeah. you know, is a great size salon. And you're under a employer-employee model, yeah. not a rent-a-booth or that type of thing. Because there's two models, right, for salons? Correct, correct. Um, the reason why I'm under that model, uh, we carry the Aveda brand, which is a global brand owned by the Estee Lauder Company. And there's a lot of training. Um, but I love the way that we're all on the same page. Uh, we share philosophy. Um, Aveda is kind of based in balance, in nature. Um, our, most of our products are organic, plant-based materials. And um, it just helps to have a unified uh, message or theme or feeling in the salon. For instance, being a small salon, you come in the salon and you'll probably get a hello from all of us and a goodbye from all of us too. So it's um, really, we don't have conflict. Uh, we all get along. We just, it's just a really nice unifying feeling. Um, and I think the customers really appreciate it and feel that they're cared for and taken care of. Well, I think, um, A, it's a great product. But B, I think the way that you and your staff delivers it is really superior. Because you're right, when you walk in, you do feel like family. Mm -hmm. You feel like it's a place to rest and leave all your crap outside mm -hmm. and just come in and you know feel better when you leave yeah. and I think that's the key to most things if we can make somebody feel better when they leave us we've been successful right and, and being a smaller peninsula um, as much care and concern as we can dispense the better um, it's just a feel-good kind of thing I mean why shouldn't we have it that way if we live in this beautiful peninsula with all the energy of the nature and uh, you know all the beauty that's around us so let me talk to you about employees a second. So uh -huh. what we find is that people have a hard time finding employees in this mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Do you have a hard time finding someone? Are there enough people with passion about beauty and products and taking care of people that that's kind of a natural here? Well, um, I would say I've never really done any recruiting. It's kind of like things have come to me. Um, but I my personal philosophy is you need to hire for skills to a certain degree, but I really hire for personality, number one. Um, so it's important to me that people are grounded, that they're kind, that they're intelligent, and it's just worked out well. Now we do have an employment source from Aveda. Aveda has many, many institutes across the country where they train specifically for Aveda. And our closest one has been San Francisco. And now they have just opened one in San Jose, which is a lot closer. Um, so we don't have any graduating students from that institute yet, but soon that will happen. And um, I'm excited about that because it's much easier for someone to lo relocate from San Jose down to the peninsula than from another city. You know, we all know the cost of living here is high. So part of my... Uh, concern that I feel is relocating people and be able to create a sustainable income for them. Um, so, uh, But I'm excited about that new employment group that's going to be about an hour away from here on the peninsula. That's great. Uh -huh. So let me ask you, so if, if I'm 18, I graduate uh -huh. from high school, uh -huh. I've always loved fiddling around with hair and, and experimenting with some color and uh -huh. I decide I would really like to go into your profession. Mm 
uh -huh. is it best to come and talk to the owner of a local establishment or am I better off to go online and find a place like an Aveda training uh, institute and enroll and take training mm -hmm. or was it Marinello's Beauty Supply or Beauty mm -hmm. here? How do, how do people get into the business? Well, getting into the business is definitely training. The state of California requires about 10 months of education to be able to be licensed. It is a licensed profession. So um, you do have to get your training somewhere. Now the difference with Aveda is the training goes above and beyond what the state requirements are. State's very concerned with licensing, about sanitation, about procedure, where Aveda talks about business, uh, extensive training with color, um, you actually work with the public, um, you can work at the front desk, and um, the Aveda schools, in my opinion, are just really one of the best schools to go to. In fact, a little bit my story, I was, uh, I was a mother with children and decided it was time to start pursuing something as a career, so I actually went back as an older adult for my education. And I chose Aveda because of the dynamic um, training and teaching that Aveda has. And then I uh, embraced the Aveda brand, and it's been a wonderful thing for me. So, well, it's good. Yeah. It's good. So yeah. I've always wondered, you know, um, there are a lot of professions that people don't really think about. Uh -huh. um, construction's another one. Uh -huh. And, you know, a lot of people kind of back into them. Mm -hmm. But I think if someone actually looks at that as a profession and not just something to go make some money and then move on, right. it's really, right. it's not anything. As you say, 10 months of training with a certification, that's really a commitment on the part of the person who's doing the um, learning that they're going to do it right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I like that. Yeah. Well, and uh, what I've done, since I'm not that close to an Aveda Institute, and I am Aveda trained, uh, over the years, I've been open for 15 years, and over the time, I have taken on uh, new hairdressers as, as mentor, as assistant, and kind of, you know, uh, taking them through the ropes. And Aveda also has extensive training, so we go up to San Francisco for different classes. Uh, we've had educators down to the salon. It's a really important uh, to stay in touch with what's new. And now we have an Aveda uh, professional website where we can see samples of hair color, formulas. Um, there's a lot of blogging, a lot of sharing. And it's a really nice network with a really good culture. It's a family within a family. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So, so the, the founder was very um, committed to a lot of the founding principles of Aveda about balance, well-being, uh, great products that come from plants and flowers. Well, and I know your salon is a very sustainable salon. The, you used uh, recycled products. Right, and right. And it's uh, very tastefully done. Right. With the help of your sons, I believe. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> well, and it was important for me um, a little bit about starting small business, too. Um, number one, it was my passion. So I think passion can fire a lot and make things happen. Um, but I tapped into sources, too. I went to the um, S um, the SBA uh, classes up in Aptos. Is uh, it the SBDC, the Small yes. Business Development Corporation? Yes, yes. Yeah. and they were really helpful, and um, they reinforced a lot of the principles that I already believed in. And then when I was down here, I worked with SCORE a little bit before I started. And, of course, with any small business, you go through a journey. You can't expect your first thought to be the final thought. Um, things are always changing, you know, looking for locations is a big deal here. Uh, but more than anything, I wanted to create a sustainable business because I knew it was small business. So I found, found a location that was a little, little off the beaten path, but um, through developing the space, I created a destination. You know, we've got a parking lot out front, we've got Trader Joe's on one side, Safeway on the other side, uh, very convenient for the employees. We have a garden out front of the salon that's as big as a salon, so it's kind of an entrance. So once you step in the door, you know that you've arrived at a destination. And um, so it, it uh, has worked out really well. How, but, you know, it took some thought to figure out um, how to create a sustainable business on our peninsula. You know, we all know the cost of living here. Well, and I think you and I talked about a lot of the business that comes to you comes word of mouth. Once you yes. get started, that people 
like someone else's hairstyle or they like their color or they like right. whatever and they will stop and say hey you know where do you go right. and who does it and that sort of thing or a lot of times people will move on to the peninsula and mm -hmm. ask somebody like me who's out and about uh -huh. you know where do you go and so I right. think that's really important that that we all understand small business really operates a lot it, on the relationship. It does, and I believe that that adds to longevity of your business too. I think um, every small business should run with integrity, honesty, um, caring, concern. Uh, we have a we advertise very little. It's a lot of word of mouth, uh, but we have a really nice um, promotion program that we do. We call it bounce back cards. So we give you a little card, and then all the verbiage is on the front. You carry that card with you, and somebody says, oh, I like your hair. You say, well, here's a little card from the salon. Go visit the salon. They'll give you $25 discount on your service. But then next time you come in, we give you a $30 discount for referring someone to us. So we reward our existing customers, too. Good. And it's worked very, very well. That's, that's nice. That's yeah. a nice way to do it. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so um, starting a small business. Mm -hmm. You start, did you know that you would have that many employees to begin with? Ha was your model to start with one or how, how did yeah. you kind of envision it? Well, my model started actually with a bigger salon okay. and with spa services, that sort of thing. We only do hair. And then, of course, I was self-taught. So the next, next part, oh, and I also worked with someone to develop a business plan. And it was for a bigger model salon. And... Uh, you know, it takes money to do everything. So I was self-funded, so I pursued a lot of different venues for additional funding, um, thinking that, you know, I was kind of naive to it, thinking about, oh, there's money for women in business, and um, anyway, kind of, and of course I started with venture capital, because that was a big thing then. It was like, oh no, after I read about it, that's <laughs> not me. No, no. <laughs> anyway, I went, uh, you know, through some different sources, and I started looking at angel investors, had some interesting experiences, and um, wasn't quite happening. Uh, so someone in my family said, you really are dedicated to doing this, aren't you? And I said, yes. So I got some funding from a relative, but then I also had a local bank help me with some additional funding. Good. So, Good. so it worked out really well. So, well, that's so I run my business pretty much debt-free, and... Um, Everything above board, and my Im my workers are employees, so there's no question as to, um, you know, everything's in really good shape. Good. I love that. But those were my goals. Um, but I would say, you know, going into the hair hair business is really a, um, of course, I'm, I, you know, knowing my age, you know, when I was a youngster, they said, you know, go to beauty school if you can't do anything else. Well... Times have changed. Uh, yeah, hairdressing now can be a profession, um, especially so associated with the Aveda brand. It's very professional, very much a, a really cohesive tribe and support. And um, I'm really, I, I can't imagine doing anything else except Aveda. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm from South Penn, Indiana. So my mom went every Saturday morning and had her hair done. You mm -hmm. know, that was just the way she was in that chair at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning for mm -hmm. whatever the big Saturday night was going to be that her hair was done. And the salon where she went, and at that time it was a beauty parlor, um, was a family. It was just couple people who were cousins and relatives that worked together and one of the people who went to high school with me was a niece mm -hmm. so she worked there and then when her aunt retired she took it over mm -hmm. and what's interesting the last time I was in South Bend it's still there still there <laughs> and now she's got a couple of her daughters uh, working there and mm -hmm. you know they're in their 40s I think one is actually 50 um, and they've now got a couple of relatives working there, mm -hmm. and they've expanded it. I think they have seven or eight chairs. But it's a bustling place, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what all the licensing requirements are in Indiana. I know in, 19, in the 60s, they probably were not as stringent as they are now with some of the health care <laughs> uh, concerns that have come. But 
it is a profession for them. And when I look at them and I look at the people who are my age who are doing that, they've all done well. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. work at it, now if you're yes. lazy, it's like any job. If you just want to do it a couple uh, days a week and call your clients at the last minute and say, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not coming in today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my hat's off to you because you all do not do that. You, If you make an appointment, you're there and yep. you run we, it like a business. Right, and we believe timing is really important. You know, you don't. I don't have to wait for you. You don't have to wait for me. Um, you know, we're really good with that. So... So that's good. So a word of advice to a small business owner? Follow your passion. Keep your dream. And expect changes along the way till you get to your, to your, um, till you open your doors. And then be open for change after that. I guess what I'm saying is be flexible, but be visionary. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So Diana Taylor, thank you so much. And you are Adara Salon. You are up on the top of Highway 68, Holman Highway. I'm going to say right behind Fifi's. That's probably an easy way. Um, just the next parking lot over uh, from Trader Joe's. And as you said, you're kind of sandwiched in between Wells Fargo, Trader Joe's on one side, and Safeway on the other. So yes. it's pretty easy to find, and there's always good parking. So yeah. anyway, so thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me on and, thank you. and uh, talking about small business, Marianne. You want to give a phone number in case? Yeah. Our phone number there is 372-8332. And we're open Monday through Saturday, only closed on Sundays. Okay, 372-8332. Correct. Okay, so there you have it, Adara Salon, Pacific Grove. Um, great place to go get your hair cut, colored, whatever else. Have a great scalp massage and a really friendly, wonderful uh, mentoring environment as you um, get pampered. So. Don't go away. We'll be back. This is your town. <laughs> this is Monterey County open for business. Thank you.